pay attention. Sit up straight. All right, kiddos, I've heard that some of you haven't been cleaning your room. This isn't acceptable. I need you guys to wash behind your ears. Eat your vegetables. Sound familiar? All right, growing up, you probably heard these rules from your parents. Or maybe you're a parent and you've even given your kids some of these rules. I know in my house, we only had one rule written in stone. It was that you couldn't date until you graduated high school. And I, like any teenager, of course, broke this rule. And this, this is the problem with rules, right? Is that we're human and we mess up. Parents often use rules as these external tools to produce some desired behavior. But today I want to encourage you parents, advise you, don't give your kid rules. Now before you get upset with me, you got to hear me out, okay? Because I believe the parent-child relationship is the most influential connection in a young person's life. So in order for us to raise up a generation that's going to carry out these innovative ideas we've been talking about today, we're going to need better parenting. And not just any type of parenting, parenting to empower. Parenting to empower is intentionally equipping your young person to impact the world around them. Now, as cliche as that sounds, isn't that what we're trying to do, parents? Add value to your kids so they can add value to the people around them? Parenting to empower, it cuts to the heart of parenting, values. We've heard value, values talked about several times today. It's what's important to us. It's what matters. Reflected what we spend our time doing, what we spend our money on. We all have values, and we all make decisions based on these values. So it only makes sense that as a parent, your job is to instill values that will enable your child to make good decisions. Let's think of values like this. If I uh, took a seed, apple seed, stuck it in the ground, all right, under the right conditions, sunlight, rain, all that stuff, the tree would come forth, right? And then maybe one day, if it's healthy, I could go pluck an apple from that tree, right? You guys understand this is pretty basic, right? Now, if I stuck an apple seed in the ground, could I ever expect to get an orange? No, that's absurd, right? Why? Because seeds produce after their own kind. Apple seeds make apples. In the same way, when you instill seeds, values in your kids, you can expect be their behavior to line up with those seeds. Put in good seeds, you'll get out good behavior. And the truth is, you as a parent, you're already communicating values in everything you do. And so, how your child is acting right now is based on those values, good or bad. That may be painful to hear, but I want to encourage you, take some of the pressure off of you. You no longer have to make your child be good or do right. Instead, you give your attention to planting good seeds, and you can expect them to bear good fruit. The first part in this process is we have to identify our values. We have to identify what seeds are we going to plant. This means sitting down. You, I would do this as a family. You sit down, you talk about what really matters to us, what's important, and you write it down. I know in my family it was always clear that we valued loving people, we valued learning, education, we valued traveling. So when I was 11 years old, someone in my family had the brilliant idea to ship me off to Jamaica. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, sandals, Jamaica, the stuff we see on TV. I'm talking about the slums of Jamaica. I'm 11 years old, okay? Now, my parents, I, I don't know why they did this. I mean, I see now why, but in the moment, it was weird. And, uh, but so I went, and that trip, it changed my life. And this is the deal, is that they gave me this opportunity, and they even nudged me into it, and then I saw, wow, this is really awesome. This is what I want to give my life to. And that's the deal. I'm seeing before you as a product of my parents' values. Not to say they brainwashed me, all right? Because if they had, I wouldn't know it. That's how brainwashing works. Um, <laughs> but that they gave me their values, and now I live from those values. They've become my values. After we've identified our values so we can communicate them, we have to have some accountability to them. And this is the big part. This is where all of us really struggle. We have to set expectations based on our values. That's what I was saying earlier. You can't expect to get an orange out of an apple seed. You have to expect apples. And so, as a parent, you set realistic expectations based on what you're helping your child do, those values that you're giving them, showing them what's important. So if little Tommy is 
not acting in line with his values, you can sit him down, and not in a condemning way. You see, condemnation, it puts the child down, it puts them in a hole. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying in a loving way, you sit down and say, hey, this is what you said you valued. This is what we said we expect based on that. So what do I need to do as a parent to help you meet that expectation? What power do I need to give to you that will enable you to meet that expectation? That's what it's about. That's empowerment at its core, is that you give your power to help your child meet the expectations. Parenting. Parenting to empower. It's about values. You've got to identify. You've got to hold yourself accountable. I want to give you a real-life value story. A few years back, my dad asked my brother, all right, this isn't my story. Uh, there's a reason for that. My dad asked my brother to clean my dad's car. And so my dad, he drives a black Suburban, so from the outside, it looks as if he values gas guzzling, right? Um, <laughs> so my, my brother, and my mom drives a Prius, go figure. Um, my, my brother's out there, he's uh, spraying off the gas guzzler, and he gets to the hood, and he notices some bird poop. All right, so he wants to do a thorough job, and so he gets in there, he's really got to spray it off, gets the job done, runs inside, come on, Dad, come, come look at the masterpiece. So that's how he talks to um, Come look at the masterpiece. And so dad, my dad goes out there. He's looking at, man, it's looking good. Then he gets to the hood. Seems there's been some casualties. In the uh, great war between the bird poop and the hose, it seems like the hood has lost some paint. Yes, it looks like someone's taking a nail and just etched some zigzags in the hood. Now my dad, like any man, would be upset about his car. So in this moment, he's got a couple responses to my brother's transgressions. Not mine, my brother's transgressions. Um, first response is, he can yell at him, you're such an idiot, what were you thinking? This is my car! That's first response. Second response is, look at the car, look at my brother, say, hey man, I realize you probably didn't mean to do this. We're going to do better next time, but I love you, I forgive you, it's just a car. All right. The first response, what does it say? I say? It says, I value this car more than I value you. I care about your work and your por- performance more than I care about who you are. And that right there, that strips any sense of self-worth that a young person has. And it leaves you walking around with doubt. Hey, maybe possessions do matter more than me. And maybe my work is more important than who I am. Second response, that gives the child power. It gives them it shows grace, forgiveness, and says, hey man, you can do better. You know, you messed up, but I'm going to help you do better. And so today I stand before you, I realize I can't give any value to this world if I don't got it, if I don't have it. Let me ask you this, where am I going to get value? Where am I going to get this worth? Because I'm going to get it, and if I'm not getting it at home, I'll go look for it somewhere else till I find it. And you as a parent, you have a perfect opportunity to be the source of your child's value. How awesome is that? What an incredible, amazing thing. So parents, on behalf of young people today, we need you to empower us. We need you to give us good values, guide us in our decision making. We need you to value us. But most importantly, we need you. Thank you. Thank you.